Okay, so this is the Airpen Plus, Airpen Pro. Um, this is the case it comes with, with all the doodads in the bottom. And then there's another storage section in the top. And that's where I keep all my pen tips, my sponges, the airflow, um, the followers that you use, and all the other uh, tips, pen tips. This is the cartridge. This is what you put your resist in. And this is the storage tip. You want to start by putting the storage tip on. Don't start by putting your pen tip on or your resist will all just fall out while you're filling it. So put the storage tip on. And your, the sponge, the little sponge part, you're going to soak that in water for a couple seconds before you use it. The resist that I use is medium resisted from Pro Color in New Zealand um, and DuPont Noir dye. I've used, I've mixed this up already um, and let it sit overnight about 50 50, about half and half each. It should be very pourable consistency, like that of honey. Um, this has actually been sitting much longer, so it's a little thicker, but the if it's too thick, it will flow out of here so slowly that it'll cause hand strain and shaky lines. So you want it to be very pourable. So all you need in the beginning is this and your, your um, storage point on, and then you pour in your resist. It could be thinner than this. And don't fill it too full because you need to put your follower in. And then on top of that, you need to squeeze out your dampened sponge and squeeze your sponge into there on top of that. And it's got a little handle on it. I don't know if you can see the little handle for pulling it out. Okay. Then you take the dispenser and you just twist it in and make sure it's in there real snug. Once it's in the dispenser, there's a suction created. So you can pull this off without the resist all just pouring out. A little bit will come out, so have a paper towel there, but it's not going to all just come pouring out. Okay, so I always keep a cup of water handy, not only to soak the sponge, but to put the things in that I take off so the resist doesn't dry on them. So let's just throw the cap on this. So I'm going to pull this plug off and then wipe any drip that comes off and put my point on and just make sure that the point is on there pretty snug. These pieces we're going to use later. So then I'll get this Now make sure that you move your cord over in a way that it's not going to sweep across your whole painting and smudge all your resist. And it's a mistake that almost everybody makes when they first start out with the air pen, is you get so into what you're doing that you sweep your cord across. So you just think about you know working down, working from one side to the other, not starting on this side and then going over, or not starting from the bottom and then moving up, or your cord will smudge everything you've done. So before I turn it on, because I don't know how loud it's going to be on the video, this is the airflow regulator. And when your finger is on this hole, the resist flows. To stop the flow of the resist, you just move your finger off of there. So that takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's a really easy way to control it. Okay, so I'm going to, I always keep a little scrap paper towel handy because when you lift it off, you want to catch any drips before you lift, before you put it back down. And when you first start it, when you first loaded it and you first start it, you want to run it on the paper towel to get any air bubbles that might be out of there. So let me turn this on. Oh, this is a soundproof pad, uh, insulating, I guess I should say sound insulating. And if you rest your unit on that, it, it doesn't make so much vibration noise on the table. Okay. So, on my paper towel, I'm going to put my finger over the hole 
and just run it until I can see that it's making a line without any air bubbles. So, I hope you can see this. So I'm going to put my finger over the hole and start a line. The slower you go, the thicker the line. The faster you go, the thinner the line. If you go too fast, you'll get a broken line. To start it, you put your finger down. As long as your finger is down, you have flow when you want to stop it. You sort of lift it and lift your finger at the same time. If you don't lift your finger at the same time that you um, stop it, you'll get, and same thing with you start it. If you, if you sort of put it down and then put your finger on, you'll get a little blob. And then if you do the same thing when you take it off, if you take your finger off and just leave it there, you'll get a little blob at the end of your line. So you sort of want to synchronize you're putting it down and running with it and then lifting and taking your finger off at the same time. If you do that, you won't get the little blobs at the end. Just cover it, make your line, lift and lift your finger. Okay, so I mean it's that easy. You just, you just make your lines. Fast for thin lines, slow for thick lines. There's different size nibs in the box, so you can do really thick lines. This I think is the, oh no, there are smaller nibs than this one, but this is the nib that I use the most, it's the yellow nib. Okay. So when you're done outlining, the first thing you wanna do is you, you wanna take while this is still inserted into here and the suction is still on it, you want to pull off your nib. Sometimes I need a paper towel to do it. And you want to put on one of these little caps. Store the storage cap, the little red storage cap. And then you're going to unscrew this again. You're going to pop out your sponge. Pop that into the water, and then you're going to take your picker tool and pull out the follower and pop that into the water. And then with your finger over the storage nib so that you, you don't push all the resist out, keep one finger over the end and put your storage cap on. If you put the cap on and you don't have your finger over the nib, the pressure can actually push this off and all your resist can come flying out. So then you can just store this in an upright position. You know, the, you can store it for quite a while, but the longer you store it, at least with this resist that I use, it tends to get thicker over time. So if I pull one of these out and it's gotten too thick, I just take this tool and just push it all back into the resist bottle and then just sort of mix it in and pour fresh resist into the tube. Um, if you decide that you want to clean the tube out, Let's pretend that this is the tube that has the resist in it. You just put your follower in and push your resist out. And the same with the little nib. To clean this out, just put it on an empty tube, draw water up into it, and just push the water out. And you just do that a few times until all of the resist is out and you're all set. It's that easy to use.